So, what is HTML? What are the building blocks of the web? And where does HTML fit? What role does HTML plays in web development? As we go along, you will see that understanding the answer to these pretty simple questions will help you make correct coding decisions down the line. What is the meaning of HTML? HTML is an acronym for Hypertext Markup Language. Let's go over these words and discuss what it means. Hypertext is a text that refers to another text either on the document itself or to another document. Hypertext is what makes a web a web-like structure. It is what makes web pages interconnected. The markup tells the web browser how to display a web page content. In this example, we can see the same textual content that is represented differently by a browser since it is in different markups. These tags are like instruction for a document structure like you use in Microsoft Office Word to make a text bold or underlined. You don't need to run through some interpreters to understand the output of this document. Though HTML is not a programming language, it has its syntax, meaning there's a right and wrong way to code it. It has sets of rules that needs to be followed to make sure its output is what we expect. HTML also has its own semantics, which means tag names can mean something either to the machine or to the humans. Let's talk about the three technologies that drive the web. Let's talk about HTML first. HTML provides a structure of the document. It tells us the components of the web page. CSS is responsible for the design of the web page. It tells us the color, the size, and the styles of the document. And the third, JavaScript. Its job is to provide behavior and functionality. Let's put that into perspective. HTML is kind of like the skeleton of the human body. It makes out the structure. It doesn't provide details on how it display out. That is the role of the CSS. In our analogy, CSS provides color to the skin, the style of the hair, and the like. JavaScript is the tool that lets you give functionalities and make your web page alive. It is the brain of the web page as you can do anything you please with it. We'll discuss more of this on the later sessions. HTML is consists of markup tags. It is very important to understand it and how to code it properly. First, HTML tags are case insensitive, meaning you can write the tags in uppercase or lowercase manner. But in this course, we strictly write our tags in lowercase as it is recommended by W3C, the community that develops web standards. An element is usually composed of opening tag, a closing tag, and a content. The HTML element is everything from the start tag to the end tag. In the example below, we have two elements. One is a heading and the other one is a paragraph. Some HTML elements have no content, like the BR, which stands for line break, and HR, that stands for horizontal rule. They only have an opening tag and don't have a closing tag at all. Every HTML element can have predefined attributes, even empty elements. We will discuss some of the common attributes as we continue with the course. HTML attributes provide additional information about the HTML elements. In our case, the string myID is set in ID attribute. ID specifies a unique identifier to the element. This means no other element of any kind on the web page is allowed to have its ID attribute equal to my ID. Otherwise, the web page would contain invalid HTML, which would cause the web page to behave abnormally. An attribute is a name value pair separated by an equal sign. In HTML5, 
enclosing the value of the attribute in code is not required. Nevertheless, it's best practice to always surround the value of the attribute in either a single cut or a double cut. The only thing you have to watch out for is making sure you close the code in opposite order of its opening. So if the last code was a single code, it must be closed first. Which code you start with doesn't make any difference. Attributes are always specified at the start tag. No space is allowed to exist between the opening bracket and the tag name. And likewise, space is not allowed between the opening bracket and the forward slash of the closing tag. However, you must have at least one space between the tag itself and its attribute, and the space is allowed anywhere else and is simply ignored. So if you have extra space after the P element in the opening tag, or if you have extra space between the equal sign or the attribute name, attribute value, or you have other space or even return characters, all of that is completely ignored by the browser. Let's take a closer look at the web page we did at the beginning of this course and discuss the parts one by one to finally see the basic HTML document structure. This document is created from the boilerplate made in Visual Studio Codes. Browser always interpret HTML sequentially, top to bottom. As discussed earlier, HTML tags are case insensitive and ignore white space. Basically, what we can do is type the code in either uppercase or lowercase letter. But as per suggested by W3C, we are writing our codes in small letters. Another one is you can have as much space as you want anywhere else. But it just doesn't look good. The doctype declaration defines that this document is an HTML5 document. HTML5 is the latest version of HTML. There are many versions of HTML that was developed. To help the browser to display our page correctly, we need to specify the version of HTML our web page is running. Next goes to HTML tag. And that's a tag that contains the entire HTML document. It is the root element of an HTML page. Here you can see our first attribute lang, meaning language, with a value of n, which means English. The head element contains meta information about the HTML page. It can contain authors, description of the web page, description of the page, page title, and whatever other external resource are needed to render the page properly, among other things. In the head tag, we can see elements can be nested, which means that elements can contain other elements. The head content is three other HTML elements. Another thing to consider when writing a nested element is to use tab to format your code to make it look cleaner. One shortcut you can use to auto format in VS Code is by pressing Shift Alt F. The most commonly used character set is UTF8, as UTF8 supports most of the symbols in the world. Also note that the meta tag is an empty element. Meta viewpoint optimizes the web and mobile view. This is the requirement for the web page to be responsive in any size of the device that will access it. The title element specify a title for the HTML page, which is shown in the browser title bar or the page tab. The title is one of the tags that is required. Without it, the HTML will be invalid. The body element defines the document body and is the container for all the visible content. 
it is often referred as a viewpoint. In our case, we have two headings. Now let's take a look at the browser. Visible. As you can see, the title is visible on the browser's tab. And two headings are visible on the viewpoint. Another tool we can use to validate our web page is the W3C validator. In here, we can verify the web page using the uniform resource identifier. In here, we can verify the web page using its uniform resource identifier. One example of this is the URL of your web page in your GitHub account. We can also verify using file upload. And lastly, we can verify using direct input. Let's do that now. I copied the code and see if it checks out. As you can see, it's all green. Let's mess things out a bit. As you can see, we remove the title and it produces an error telling us the title is required. White space is ignored by the browser, but you cannot put it anywhere you want. Basically, this error tells us that the second heading cannot be part of the first heading. This happened because we omitted the end tag. In the next session, we're going to explore more HTML elements.